Operation Caesar took place during the last year of the Second World War and was a secret operation carried out by the Third Reich. Its aim was to provide advanced technology to Japan, which would allow it to fight longer and engage more forces from Allied countries. The mission ended in total failure. Operation Caesar ended when the German submarine U-864 was sunk by the British submarine HMS Ventura. It was the only case in history when a submerged submarine destroyed another submerged submarine. On December 5th, 1944, U-864 left the port of Kiel and set off for its maiden and final cruise. U-864 was an IXD-2 oceanic submarine. This class were one of the largest German underwater cruisers. U-864, like other units of the type, had been rebuilt for transport purposes. Thanks to this, it was able to transport up to 250 tonnes of cargo. It was also equipped with a snorkelling mast, a device in the form of long pipes which supplied air to internal combustion engines, which enabled it to flow in a continuous draft at the depth of the periscope. The main cargo of U-864 was schematics. Among others, there were plans of jet fighters ME-163 Comet and ME-262 Schwalbe, missile guidance systems V-2, and fragments of jet engines. There were 73 people aboard the U-864, including two engineers from Messerschmitt and two Japanese scientists. A report from the Norwegian Coastal Administration, based on ultra-archives from London, lists the load of 1,857 containers with mercury. That's about 76 tonnes. The British say there is no evidence that uranium oxide was on board the U-boat. The U-864 was commanded by Lieutenant Commander Ralph Reimer Wolfram. The mission started very badly. While leaving the Kiel Canal, the U-864 ran aground. Wolfram made the decision to make repairs in Bergen, Norway. The ship reached Bergen and the repairs started, but at the same time the British had made the third and last raid on U-boat pens. On January the 12th, 1945, 33 Lancaster bombers attacked the submarine base, hitting it with three huge tall boy bombs. One of the bombs broke through the roof of the bunker, killing 20 people and damaging two submarines. One of them was U-864. An interesting fact is that the former German base in Bergen is now used by the Norwegian Navy as a base for submarines. Commander Wolfram did not realise that the British, with the help of Poles, had long broken the Enigma code and were able to read the secret messages that were being sent. In February 1945, the Allies discovered the details and what exactly Operation Caesar was. It was then decided to set a trap and send a British submarine HMS Venturer with the mission of destroying the U-boat. HMS Venturer was launched in May 1943 and was the first ship of the new British V-Class. On her most famous 11th patrol, she set off from the British submarine base at Lerwick in the Shetland Islands. She was commanded by 25-year-old Jimmy Launders. The ship was sent to the area around the Norwegian island of Fedja. The mission was simple, find and destroy the German U-boat. HMS Ventura was smaller than its victim by more than 20 metres. She was able to carry only eight torpedoes, which, when compared to the 22 that the U-864 had on board, didn't look impressive. However, the British ship was almost 50% faster underwater. HMS Ventura was also equipped with ASDIC, ASDIC, an English sonar. Captain Launders decided not to use it because he could reveal the position of his ship and instead relied on hydrophones, underwater microphones. He didn't realise, however, that the U-864 had already escaped him. The German ship had been long out of Ventura's reach when the diesel engine started to make noise and cause problems. Commander Wolfram, fearing that the engine may break down completely, decided to return to Bergen in order to make repairs. He didn't realise that he'd led his crew into the lion's mouth. On February the 9th, the hydrophone operator aboard the HMS Venturer heard a sound that he recognised as coming from a diesel engine mounted on a fishing boat. Captain Launders ordered to approach the object. 
At some point, he noticed a periscope object that he considered to be a scope of another submarine. What Launders identified as a periscope was probably one of the fragments of the mass that fed air into the diesel engines. Launders, still submerged, ordered a series of gauges, and as a result of this, HMS Venturer found herself behind U-864. Now it was just a matter of time, and all he had to do was wait for the German U-boat to emerge, then fire the torpedoes. However, U-864, thanks to the snores, didn't have to emerge. Commander Wolfram ordered to sail with a zigzag, which could indicate that a British submarine was detected. After three hours of chase, the batteries on board the HMS Venturer began to run out, which in turn could lead to the need to emerge. Captain Launders made the decision to attack while remaining submerged. It was difficult, because he had to calculate the three-dimensional point of intersection for the torpedoes, estimating the depth of his opponent on the basis of the nostrils protruding above the water. It was obvious that the enemy would immediately detect the launch of torpedoes, so Launders took into account possible U-boat manoeuvres and attacked finally at 12.12. HMS Ventura fired four torpedoes, one after another, with a 17.5 second interval. After the last launch, Launders ordered an immediate crash dive to avoid counterattack. Wolfram, commanding U-864, immediately ordered to go down at the same time, making a sharp turn. He managed to avoid three torpedoes. However, Launders fired the last two torpedoes at a slightly different depth, which meant that the last fourth torpedo hit the target, tearing it into two parts. U-864 went down 50 metres right to the bottom of the ocean, taking all crew with her. Nobody was saved. The wreck of the U-boat was found in 2003 by the Norwegian Navy, about two miles from the island of Fedja. A dangerous cargo of 65 tonnes of mercury has been resting on the bottom of the ocean for decades. It turned out there was already contamination, and the ecological disaster was only a matter of time. It was recognised that the risk of raising the wreck with its still-equipped torpedoes was too big. In February 2017, the Norwegians created a huge underwater tomb, covering the submarine with 1.5 metres of sand and 160,000 tonnes of gravel and stones.